everyone, I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition for Astronomy for Beginners. And welcome to part 5, as we've been doing this massive project on this NEQ6, doing the Supertune rebuild. If you've been watching my uh, recent projects videos, please hit the like button, okay? And also, please subscribe onto my channel. Again, activate the notifications by hitting the bell at the bottom after you've subscribed and it will keep you updated for any future projects and product reviews coming very very soon so we're also available for Facebook group Astronomy for Beginners Facebook group please join that group we've got a lot of good information there all the links for the parts and the special tools and they're all at the description below okay so if you want to order certain parts please check out the description and order your parts for your super tune project for your EQ6 and any Q6 mouse so now what we're going to do we're going to take you to the final stages of the assembly and a few minor tweaks to this mount let's crack on with this project and let's do this so before you put the mount head, remove the little brass lockdown screw and unscrew it. The reason to remove this is when you put it in there, you don't want any small parts getting in the way and damaging your mount spindle. We're then going to apply a film of grease all the way around the bearing and smear of grease on the last two PTFE washers you're going to line the washers up like so you can put the washers on the mount itself to make it easy so you can either put the washers in there or you can put them on the spindle so remove the stud and the lock lock down brass bush we've put a bit of grease green grease around there for the setting circle and some grease around the bearing nothing on the outer edge we've placed the setting circle first because if you don't set this first guess what will happen you're going to take the whole head out so then we grab our head like so we've got our as you can see there we've got our bushes in place and then we're going to line her up slide it in rock, rock it back and forth okay and then try again line up the last bit okay there you go we are now seated in so quite easy to do it just shows you sanding down some of the burrs in the RA spindle will help to fit in a lot easier so that's that that's really good so as that as you can see there a lot less effort if you are struggling to put the the mount head then some people put the RA axis in first and then do the decanation on top last however by doing that it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to put the electric motors and the screws in place we're going to place our last back. taper roller bearings along this shaft like so okay oh wow I want to just uh, put it in and it's starting to glide like a like no tomorrow so we're going to put the retainer like so And what we'll do is we're going to adjust the the bearing so we'll put it in by hand wow that's that's Rita rotate okay we're we'll around about the tension there okay there's no free play so we're going to tighten up these screws so once we tightened up so we're just using it to preload it okay 
once it's like tight we just back it off slightly like so just literally only a little bit of a turn okay and that should be tight and then what we do is once we've got it preloaded and slacking off slightly we then use our two millimeter allen key and we'll tighten all the four screws like so on the retainer okay same again okay last one so that's all the screws tightened up so the bearings preloaded and it's running smooth without no free play so we place the retainer we're going to place our outer ring over here like so all right we're going to place the three screws place a last retainer ring line up the three holes using a Phillips screwdriver now these only need to be nipped up don't need to be super tight just tiny little threads that go on here Line up the last screw. Okay, that's all the three screws lined up. And the last bit we're going to do on this end is you put your polar scope. So I've lubricated some of the threads here and I'm just going to screw in the polar scope. Just make sure that your polar scope lens is clean. So as you slot it in place, you just tighten it up like so. Now I'm just using the uprated polar scope, which is the HM5. So tighten it up by hand and then using a strap spanner, just tighten it up and you should be good to go. Once it's tightened up, you're going to place the cap like so. So that's the cap in place, and that ends it squared away. So, replace our brass lockdown screw and our uh, brass clamp washer, put it in the RA axis like so. Once all the brass clamps are on, to just um, tighten it all the way up, okay, just back it off, place one of the lockdown levers on there, okay, so lock it down, back it off, readjust the lever, like so, then grab the Phillips screw, like so, Okay, that's one lockdown lever for the counterweight. Another lever for the detonation. Tighten it up. Back it off. Readjust. You can mount these levers any way you want. So, like so. the detonation again you, it's up to you how you want to have these locking levers positioned and the last one is the RA axis again lock it down fully then back it off and then put the last fillet screw Okay, so that's all the locking levers in place, 
like so. So now we connect our motherboard. First thing you've got to do is make sure that your hand controller harness is connected to this port. It fits one way. Just make sure that your hand controller harness is connected up and your power for your DC supply is also connected here. Okay, so that's connected up. And now all you've got to do is connect the detonation and RA axis of the motor. So here's the detonation. That's connected up. The RA axis is here. Again, you can't go wrong because it's labelled. So RA axis is it connected up. And last but not least, your polar scope, which fits here. You can't see it very well, but fit your polar scope. Like so. That's all the wires connected up. We're going to put the case on. Line it up. Okay, that's our case. Then put a last Phillips screws in there. Okay, that is now the motherboard, all the wires connected up and the cover plate secured. So we place the dust cap of the polar scope, that's in place. Then last but not least, we put our dual saddle plate or whatever saddle plate you have. Okay, again, using a 3 mil screwdriver, we're going to tighten up the grub screws. Right, so it depends on how you want to position it, but ideally you want to position it, set to second, setting circle to zero, all right, and then just tighten up your screws. Bit by bit, there are three screws, so tighten up each one first, then tighten the next one. Do it in stages. Next turn. Okay, so that's your dual saddle plate fully secured. So even though you have adjusted it in part four, okay, as you followed that video guide. You may think everything's running smoothly. So, just to prove one thing, as you can see here, I've still got the dreaded free play, which sort of put me off a little bit. But as you can see, I've still got that 5mm play in the detonation axis. However, I've now figured it out what was the main causes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through to adjust the final parts of your drives. And the reasons why I've done that is to add the extra weight because that's where most of the free play will occur as soon as you apply the weight to this mount. As soon as you apply it, you start to see the intolerances the, or, the, or the free play. So... I'm going to show you now how to adjust the worm drives and sort out once and for all this annoying backlash free play. So as you can see, after we just put on the added weight, we got the, the backlash. And as you can see, with that added weight, it just added that backlash straight away. So what we've done is we've taken off the counterweights and the tube. And what we're going to do is I'm going to readjust the detonation axis again. Now the reason why I've taken off the weight is that this plate is very hard to move while it's under load. So you take off all the weight 
and you're going to readjust the detonation axis worm drive so what we're going to do is we're going to take you through the stages bit by bit so you'll get to understand how it works so take off all the way and I'm going to take you through the stages get, get your 5mm allen key and crack off the four bolts crack them off like so until but don't remove them okay that's the bolts cracked off the next step is get your 2mm allen key and where the grub screw for the 2mm grub screw you slacken this off like so you then go to the top crack off the top one like so so both bolts are loose and the plate should move up or down so remember when you tighten this one up you're pushing the plate up so we've got our grub screw and we're going to adjust it like so half a turn stop so the bottom one should be tight which it is and what we do is we're going to loosen it half a turn okay we're adjusting the top one tightening it half a turn so we check the bottom one okay it's gone a bit tight so we just tighten that slightly now as you can see I'm moving the head and I can't feel for any free play so there's no free play we're going to tighten up these bolts using the 5mm allen key remember to do it in stages So all four bolts are tightened up. So I'm checking the head. Okay, there's no backlash. So now we're just to the decanation and there's no free play. We need to remove this cap. So you need to check that this worm drive is free to rotate. So for the people that's done the row and belt mod, check that spindle, see if it's free to rotate. If not, you've got to do the same procedure, slacken it all out until this is free to rotate otherwise what will happen is if you over tighten this worm drive it's going to destroy the tooth belt so don't over tighten it mild adjustments is needed so use a special tool crack it off remove the cap and as you can see the worm drive is still free to rotate so now the spindle is free to rotate we put the cap back on like so and we're going to lock it down using a special tool like so so now we're just at the worm drive we've put the cap weights on first and we've put the telescope tube we're now going to check the backlash and as you can see I'm proper rocking this that I'm actually moving the whole setup just about so as you can see there I've adjusted that free play yeah Get in there.
so even with the added weight as you can see look at that that is so smooth that is very smooth it just glides effortlessly and that's what you want you see so as you can see those uprated bearings I just, I'm really impressed with the bearings so far we've activated the NEQ6 and we're powering through the Skywatcher Wi-Fi adapter as you can see here I'm using my mobile phone now if you've not seen that video please check the video at the top now that adapter works with this mount very well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my mobile phone and I'm going to check the drives so just have a listen to this and see what you reckon Wow. Check the RA axis. Wow. What a massive improvement. Checking both drives together. Oh, do you see how that just glides through the motor? The motor sound is reduced. You know what the best thing is? It's not even sounding like a coffee grinder. So it just shows you how much improvement it has made. It seems a lot more responsive. It just feels like a, it feels like a free grand mount here. I'm really impressed. As you can see, you can clearly f see through the results here that this Super Tune has done a massive improvement. The mount is tracking so responsive. The bearings are moving freely. As as I can clearly see. Wow, it's the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> I've actually quite chuffed to bits really. I mean, I've spent a lot of work on this mount and it has really paid off. Wow, that is fantastic. What can I say? What can I say? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a close look on the drive axis and see how responsive it is. Don't forget with the gear type that I had, I had a lot of play. So we're going to test it out how it moves in between. Now usually gears suffer from backlash. So the whole idea with this belt modification is to eliminate this backlash problem. At the moment it slews perfect. It just feels like a different mount and it feels responsive it's smooth there's no binding so what we're going to do is we're going to take a closer look on the axis and see what you reckon and uh, so far i'm really impressed with the results already so we're rocking it back and forth up and down 
Wow! So even quick presses like this, up and down, and I'm not blagging my case, as you can see here, alright, I'm using my mobile phone, alright, and look at that, very responsive. Now if it was the gear type that I had, I would have had a lot of backlash and there'd be a slight delay on the motor. That is really responsive. Fantastic improvements already. I'm really happy with the results. And would I recommend super tuning your EQ mount? Yes, I would. For all the things I've just seen now, it's made massive improvements already. So yes, I would seriously recommend for you guys and girls to try this out for yourselves. Again, think about how much you're going to save in the long run. All right, it's worth that little bit extra money. Overall, it's cost me around about £330 for all the things I need. That's the polar scope, that's, that's the bearings, complete new bearings, upgraded bearings, the belt modification, the special tools and the grease. So £330 is a lot. However, that depends on your budget. You may want just to strip down and clean and just replace what's needed. But again, it's up to you, it's within your budget. And again, no matter if you do a, a deep clean and replace it with a different grease, you're still going to get some form of performance, okay? And it's going to be better than it was originally. So far, what I've just seen, fantastic results. And I'm really happy what how much this has achieved just by doing a physical check. Please follow the other parts, right? That those parts are there to give you a good guide so that when you do undertake this project yourself, this level of expertise here that I provided will help you achieve your goals and help you modify your modif modify your mount and making sure that this mount performs as it should. So so far in the long run, I might have spent three hundred and thirty pounds. I was considering buying another mount, but however, considering I've saved so much money, add the grand plus, I've saved a lot of money. And so far what I've seen, I reckon that this mount is going to perform as it should. So again, if you like my video, please hit the like button. I strongly encourage you to hit the, hit the like button and please support Astronomy for Beginners. Again, we're also available for Facebook group, the Astronomy for Beginners group. Please join that group. All right, we've got a lot of expert people there now. We've got good astrophotographers and good astronomers, and will help the beginners and get the most out of this hobby. Again, loads of advice on equipment and buying advice, even to the imaging stuff. So again, please join our group. All right. Again, please subscribe onto my channel. Hit the notifications tab. Again, hit that bell. Keep you updated to the next uh, Astronomy for Beginners uh, projects and product reviews coming in the future. So far, looking at the amount, I'm really excited about this. I'm getting ready for hopefully when the sky stops to clear, I'll take this baby out, out for an imaging run, and check out see how it performs. Can't wait for that. So, please look forward to part six. Wish you all clear skies. Please do super tune this EQ mount. All right, please undertake this project. Thanks again. Thanks for watching. And I wish you all clear skies.